Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. This is a sit down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Chantel Martin is here with us. She is an extraordinary artist. Beyond the Streets is a virtual art fair coming this weekend in New York. Chantel, how are you? Good morning. I was just admiring your Christmas stockings. I feel like <laughs> I need to get some. It's time. It's December. The calendar is officially flipped. So you got to get in the holiday spirit, right? I mean, you got the great artwork in your place. So, I mean, you, you got that going for you. That, that's a given, right? Yeah, totally, totally. Cool. Well, it's nice to start Friday with you like this. Um, I'm glad to hear it. And uh, I'm really excited for the virtual art fair this weekend. So, I mean, we, listen, we'd love to be in person for something like this, but what can people expect when they check things out this weekend? Yeah, so there's a lot of things going on and um, there's a lot of different artists coming from all different angles and perspectives from myself. I'm dropping a couple of different things. So there's two limited edition prints and there's also a, a video segment. So we, we recorded an interview before as well. But there's, you know, lots of, uh, I guess, drops, if you like to call it, and, um, and talks and videos. So it's going to be a really fun packed weekend. So you're somebody who has dedicated your life to art. What's it like for you to see just all the amazing stuff that's being produced around the world at this point? I mean, it's really crazy how things have blown up. So what does that mean to you when you take a look and, you know, take a step back here? Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's funny the words that you use, but, you know, um, blowing up in a good way, I guess you're saying. With, with I would art. say yes, blowing up in a good way. <laughs> art becoming even bigger, even more mainstream. You know, I think the more that we put art into people's hands, you know, and, and it's funny because we all draw as children. It's just that somewhere along the way that we stop or we, we believe that we can't do it. And so when we have art fairs like this or, or some of the events that we're having around the world where we see artists creating, we see creatives making things, that hopefully inspires other people to do the same, you know, because the more people that are creative, the more people that have some kind of connection between their head and their hand, it allows them to express things. And so I think art is definitely a benefit for so many people. And so it's really good to see it all out there. You mentioned the connection between the head and the hand. When did you realize that was something that was going to really define your life? That's a good question. You know, I, I drew as a kid. I didn't know it was art. I wasn't around artists or galleries at that time, but I always found some comfort in drawing. You know, I always found a way of, of getting things out. I always found a way of expressing myself through drawing. And, you know, I think that's something that I've just kept throughout my life. It's just this interaction or this tool that allows me to connect and it allows me to experience and it allows me to share. And so I'm so fortunate as an artist, I feel that, that that's, that's my career. Mm. And I love that I get to create, you know, museum shows or exhibitions and children can walk in and be like, wait, I can do that too. You know, that can be a career, that can be a path. So the more that we can make things, the more that we can share things, the more that we can encourage, the more that we can inspire, you know, that, that, that's a great kind of path for, for many people to be on. That's really beautifully said. And the stuff you're doing right now will impact people. Just like when you were a kid, you had stuff that impacted you. And, you know, reading up a little bit on your story, it seems like you spent time all around the world, whether it was in London or in America or in Japan. So how did the global perspective really inform your artwork and, and make you the artist you are today? Yeah, that is a good question. You know, global perspective. I think I didn't have that much perspective when I was younger. I just imagined that there had to be somewhere on the outside. There had to be somewhere else to go. So it might have been initially about an internal escape, an escape from London, an escape from England, which took me to Japan. But it's really incredible when you go to a completely different foreign country when you're young, because there's no one there projecting onto you who you should be, and you're not living up to any stereotypes. So you really get to discover who you are as an individual. And, you know, that's kind of been the evolution of, of myself. It's going to these different countries, moving from London to Japan, then from Japan to New York. And, you know, not reinventing, but, but finding out who you are each time you move. So the global perspective is so important because, you know, often we become insular and we think that all there is is what's around us. But when you can look out and when you have you know, friends or family or influences from a global perspective, from the outside world, that only really expands your thinking and, and the idea of what's possible. So you hit on a couple of really important things there. And obviously identity is such a big thing. And also how the city that you're in kind of shapes that. So when you think about New York City, it has such a rich history of art. What defines New York in your opinion in terms of why it's a special place for so many great artists over the years? You know, New York, it's all those cliche things. It's bold, it's confident, 
you know, there's lots of magical interactions here. And, you know, there's so much of a legacy here, but there's still so much that is also created here. So I think those things for me, you know, it's why it keeps me in this type of, of area as well. But I think it also what keeps it creative. And, you know, obviously we're in special times now, but there still are those things here. There still is that camaraderie. There's still, you know, people collectively wanting to work as communities and groups. So it, it's a magical place. I know that the live drawing is something that's sort of your specialty in a sense. So when was the last one you did? And just paint the picture for me. What's that like when you have all these people watching you do your thing? Yeah, so the last live drawing I did was, you know, very different from the ones that I usually do, but it was at the New Britain Museum of American Art, which is in Hartford in Connecticut. And I had my first museum retrospective show there. And as a part of that show, I did a 40 foot by 16 foot drawing. And, you know, I, I usually like to invite people to come in and see my drawing because I think it's important to expose that process. But, you know, I was drawing with a mask on, climbing up and down the ladder, running along back and forth of this wall. There were people watching, but, you know, socially distanced with their masks on. It was very quiet. And, um, you know, usually I'm drawing, there's hundreds of people in a room, you know, I'm talking, it's, you know. So it was definitely a very different um, speed or a space that I'm used to working in. But I still think, you know, those, ways that we can still try and make it work are still important. I know your art has brought you to a lot of different places and in front of a lot of different people. I know Kendrick Lamar is one of those people. So can you just share a story about what that experience was like? You know, that was interesting. So, um, you know, Art Basel Miami, I, I did a collaboration with Kendrick. We interviewed each other and, and then did a concert together on, on the beach in a 360 degree projection zone. But what was the interesting thing is, you know, there was a segment where um, Kendrick was making live beats for me and then I would be inspired by those, by those beats and would be creating a drawing and that drawing would inspire the continuation of the beats. So this kind of creative loop. And what was most inspiring for me about that is that I got to see someone that is so confident with their craft in their process. Mm -hmm and got to see how he made things or he made the beats. And, you know, as he was making the beats, he was also kind of rhyming or searching for words. And it felt like the words were just kind of falling into him. And, you know, that, that was inspiring because it reminded me of the way that I'm drawing or creating music myself in the sense that you just allow it to flow. Mm. And everything after that falls into place. You know, you're not forcing it. You're not trying to do anything that isn't it. You're not trying to be anyone other than yourself and everything falls into place. So it was really amazing seeing another creative in the flow, in the creative process. Yeah, that must have been an extraordinary experience. And it's really cool to hear you talk about that because you know who you are and you know mm -hmm. what makes you special. And I think that's really cool. And eventually people will be able to come back in person and watch you do your thing and we'll be able to go to museums again. So when you think about the future post COVID, you know, what are you most excited for as an artist, whether it's being in front of people again or just going different places, what really pops to you at this point? You know, it's a good question. You know, I'm hopeful that we would have learned some lessons from, you know, this time that we're going in. You know, I'm hopeful that, you know, we don't have this institutional memory loss that we've had quite often where things go back to normal and, and then we forget everything that just, transpired so so obviously I'm hopeful for shows again and you know dining in and, and going to see live bands and um, live shows and, and all of that and I also hope that we're coming to those things you know with lessons that we've learned or kind of more appreciative of, of those moments and the people around us amen to all that Chantal you're a remarkable artist looking forward to the virtual fair this year uh, this weekend thanks so much and we'll talk to you down the road all right Cool, this weekend. Thanks so much.